Yo, what is good, YouTubes? This is your boy in the NYC. It's me, Ray, and this is the EDCC that is the Everyday City Carry. Surprise! Where is the guest? I thought I would bring back the solo pod for this week. I'm not sure if this is going to be a reoccurring thing. Some of the guests that I invited kind of fell through or like it's kind of we had a lot of scheduling issues. And, you know, believe it or not, some peeps, I think, you know, a little hesitant to come on the pod, maybe, or just time constraints. And this is to give you guys a treat. You know, for the people who, is ne who have never watched the solo pods before, this is how this all started. I was just here rambling to myself. Yeah. Cheers to everybody watching this right now on a Friday morning. It is Wednesday morning for me. I do have a couple of things to cover. Let me just make sure the audio is recording there. I also wanted to prove to myself that I can still do this. You know what I mean? I think doing a solo pod is a skill on itself. And uh, I wanted to see if I could still do this thing, man. This is how I started, just rambling, looking at knife news and things like that. And, and people started to really, really enjoy that, man. That is when the, char the, the channel, that is when the channel started popping off, you know? But yeah, the uh, first thing I want to talk about is my homie MC, my homie Metal Complex, man. This just happened today. Um, I got wind of this. As you guys know, I have been invited to the Knife YouTube Elites for some reason. I don't know what it is, but you know, I chat with these guys every day. And, you know, Metal Complex is like, yo, they demonetized my entire channel. And I repeat entire channel okay not a video the entire channel the entire channel is demonetized and it's like something along the lines of like it's dangerous like he had weapons or something um i got a message in the elites group chat uh, i skimmed through it but i was like on the train rushing to get home and do this but um, let me see if we could check out MC's video, actually, so you guys can get a little bit more information on it. I'm not sure how good, not sure how good the video quality is going to be since I am recording audio separately. So you get that good, that good audio, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, but let's just check it out. Let me share my screen with you guys real quick. Because it's a really sad thing, man, you know, um, Metal Complex is an inspiration to me, man. As with a bunch of other knife content creators or just people in general, man, the dude works really hard. And there's the video right there, it says demonetized. And, you know, this is his main gig, I think. Um, so let's just check it out right now and, and see uh, what he says about it. What's going on guys? Metal Complex here and unfortunately today I'm going to be talking about something that is not good at all. Last night at about 1 o'clock in the morning, YouTube demonetized my entire channel. I'm uploading this video to offer clarification on that, what it means for me uh, moving forward, how it can impact potentially other channels that are like mine, and how it can potentially impact you guys. First off, right off the bat, what I want to say is YouTube did not take away my ability to upload new content. Uh, they are not removing my old content from the platform. That's not what's happening. I'm not banned from YouTube. Um, what they did is they took away uh, the ad revenue or the money that is generated um, from the ads before, during, and after my videos. That's what happened. Um, it was uh, confusing because I wasn't offered much of an explanation, which is something that I'm sure you guys have heard from other content creators. We're going to talk about that. I want to uh, explain to you guys what happened and how I feel about it. 
Um, if you're wondering, how can I help? Is there a way that I can help? Yes, there is. If you're subscribed, stay subscribed and make sure your notifications are turned on. If you're not subscribed, it would be awesome if you did subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Um, but really, the thing that would be the best is if you shared this video. Share it with as many people as possible, not just for my benefit, but for the benefit of everybody in the community, uh, especially those other content creators out there um, who depend heavily, if not entirely, on ad revenue to keep their channel going. If it happened to me, somebody who views these objects strictly as tools and nothing else, somebody who only does tabletop overviews, breaking down the little complexities, uh, the interesting details of, of composition and construction, right, geometry, all of that stuff, if it happened to me, it can definitely happen to anybody. So if you are a viewer, somebody who regularly watches knife content on YouTube and you have a channel that you love, it's possible that that channel is operating entirely, uh, you know, like the, 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 the funding for their channel is 100% ad revenue. So if that were taken away, uh, that channel potentially would not be able to, or it'd be very difficult to continue to make content. They could still potentially make content, but uh, running a channel does have a cost. Uh, depending on what you do, how much time you put into it, it definitely does cost money. Um, so uh, I don't want to see this happen to uh, one of those other great channels out there who really relies on ad revenue. Um, so um, if you're wondering how you can help, that is definitely uh, not, not only a way that you can help me, but um, you can help in, in a lot of ways the entire knife community here on YouTube. And So yeah, uh, that's pretty much the short story or long story whatever it is um it is a 10 minute video you guys can check that out and share it help out metal complex but i want you guys to do is um you know help this dude out man you know uh subscribe to his patreon you know the thing is like with patreon right i have some current events here for you guys too uh the thing with patreon is like you know if you just want to support the creator like me, for example, I have a few homies that like help out and dude, the people that subscribe to my Patreon, I owe those motherfuckers dear to my heart, yo. Like they're like the closest of, you know, people that, cause I'm, I'm, I'm literally like, I'm gonna just tell you guys the truth right now. Before my channel was demonetized, um, I'm not in the same situation as Metal Complex. My channel was demonetized because my YouTube channel name is different from my legal name, right? So <clears throat> I had to refill the forms once uh, you reach a certain amount of funds um, for, with ad revenue. And I, I've reached that threshold. It was like slightly under 300 bucks. I used it to buy this camera basically and the, the lens and things like that. Um, and that's all I made, yo. <laughs> in four years of YouTube, um, I don't know how many weeks I've been posting literally a video a day for, well, let's six days a week I post. And on YouTube, um, that doesn't include TikTok or Twitter or the IG reels that really pop off or, or the Instagram posts and things like that you know, communicating with people and stuff. And, and that all of that is fun for me, okay? That's not what I'm saying here. But if you think about how many hours a, a creator puts in to do this weird niche thing on YouTube, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like any help we can get is, is definitely, um, you know, incredible. Like, and, with, you know, thank you for everyone that helps out. But please, like, you know, head over to a Metal Complex's Patreon, you know, drop a fiver or whatever it is. I don't know what his tier system is. Um, even if you don't like the content, just like help the dude out. This is basically like a GoFundMe, like kicks, uh, not Kickstarter, like a GoFundMe type deal. Because, you know, Metal Complex makes really, really good informative knife videos that's like pretty lighthearted in my opinion. And, uh, but he's like very clear and concise, you know. And a lot of people like that, man. That's why he's he's massive and he's grown so quickly. Um, but yeah, I definitely help out my boy MC. Um, you know, just just get him some help and stuff like that. And uh, 
Yeah, that's all I really wanted to say about that, man. Shout out to you, Metal Complex, yo. Give you a digital fist bump right now. Also, um, you should also... Give me one second to pull this up right here. While we're on the topic of Patreon... <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by patreon.com slash everyday city carry. That is Kelly and I's Patreon. We do content on there all the time. Um, that's my cat meowing in the background right now. You guys that are fans of the channel know the deal. Frankie meows for Kelly to come home and she's not going to be home for at least another 30 minutes. But yeah, that is where Kelly and I do one podcast every week. So you're getting four hours, at least four. It's usually more. We do like an hour 10, hour 20 sometimes. So you're getting like almost four and a half hours of content a month for the minimum of $5 per month. Um, you also get access to things like Netflix watch parties. You do need to be on a desktop to do that. But what that is, is let's say like I decide to watch The Conjuring 2, right? Let's say like we somehow convince the Kelly to watch a horror movie and we could watch that on Netflix together through this link that I will provide in the Patreon. And then there's a chat window while we're watching it and we could all like chat and be like, oh shit, that fucking scared the shit out of me. Just things like that. Just, you know, more community stuff. Um, that's what the Patreon is. I used to do behind the scenes vlogs on there but people enjoyed it so much i just brought the vlog series to the to mondays on the regular youtube channel and i hope you guys have been enjoying that i've seen an uptick in comments and people have really been enjoying kelly and i just going around new york city um next week's is gonna be like mother's day obviously because sunday is mother's day i'm gonna be at my mom's crib so you're gonna see what we do there i think we have been like crazy barbecue and stuff like that everyone's vaxxed so we're, we're good but um yeah, man. Patreon, yo. Go to Patreon, uh, Metal Complex Patreon, patreon.com slash Everyday City Carry. Help out your boys. Ah, man, I mean, that was a bummer, dude. Sorry to start the show off like that, but that really touched me, man. You know? Uh, what I, Another thing I wanted to do was, I, you guys know that I have been having a hard time with scheduling, finding time to do reviews and things like that. And I have a ton of stuff to review. I have a backlog of CJRB and Artisan Cutlery Knives here. So I got to do that. Dude, I'm like out of breath. I'm so like not podcast fucking ready. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Chatty Cathy. Um, let me show you guys what knives I'm talking about. The first two I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, and shout out to Russell from Artisan Cutlery for providing these for me. This is the CJRB Gobi. Uh, this is the Amazon exclusive one with the black and red color combination. Shit looks pretty dope, dude. What you think? Uh, and this is an AR RPM, RPM 9 steel, which is uh, a steel developed by Artisan Cutlery. And I really like this one, okay? Of course, I'm putting these knives, you know, to give them some shine on the podcast. And I don't know if there's going to be a regular thing. I definitely miss doing these solo pods and this might be a segment. Let me know if you guys enjoy it. What I like about this a lot is just like the ergos are really good. You see this little curve right here in the scale. Fits well in the fish paws, I'll tell you that much. And uh, the action is just snappy, just really easy action. So nice budget flipper on this one. You can find these on Amazon.com. I'll put a link in the description. I couldn't find these. I saw these one time. I don't know if they're sold out now. Uh, I was supposed to make, I was supposed to make like an Amazon video for this, but I didn't because I couldn't find the the actual product listing. I only found it once and it disappeared. Maybe I should ask Russell for it. But that one's really dope. Check that one. This is the CJRB Gobi uh, Amazon exclusive. And uh, right I have right here is the CJRB Crag. Also an Amazon exclusive. Black and red color layout. AR RPM 9 blade steel. What have I done like tough with this? So Kelly was like using like 
like cock and stuff to not not cock not not the ding dong like cock you know what i mean <laughs> like you gotta cut the tip and fucking she was using it for like her plant stuff and she was like hey can you cut the tip of this and then i literally used this thing on a bunch of them and uh it was really good it performed really well for that um you know aside from the typical cardboard and stuff like that uh yeah, it's just really, really cool that CJRB did this color format for Amazon because it's nice, man. I actually like this way better. The crag that I tried before was the um, recoil lock. And I, while that lock is interesting, I do think that it is kind of unfinished, maybe. It's cool, though. I like this liner lock version much better. This is just a beefy kind of like... Just a cool looking knife. You know what I mean? If you like cleavers, you know, check this one out. This is on Amazon. Very, very nice. Yeah, damn, I missed these. I haven't played with these in a while. Let's get you a close up of the blade there real quick. All right. Let's see. Um, this is one that's a bummer, okay, because, not because I don't like it, I do really like this a lot, this is the Artisan Cutlery Hyperion, and I fucked up today, and I dropped it, yo, I was cutting cardboard, and it was like ripping through that shit, dude, and then I don't know if you guys can see it, but like the tip, it like fell on the tip, and it's kind of fucked up, and... Oh, man, I'm like, you can kind of see it's kind of gnarly right there. And oh man, I was so mad. I kind of like rolled the edge a little bit and I'm not that good at sharpening. And this is Damascus and I just don't know if I'm going to like sharpen it, you know, I don't know. I, I feel really bad. It was performing really well though. And I want to, you know, show that on the pod here. Because this is a cool fucking knife, dude. Um, my only problem with it... I don't know the prices of these. I think this was this one's a pricey one. Because you've got Damascus. It's um, it's a collab with D-Rocket. I think that's Daryl Caston, right? If I'm not mistaken. I think that's his name. Um, yeah, it's Titanium Bolsters. Titanium Pocket Clip. CF... Uh, I think I had no complaints about it aesthetically. It was just really, really cool looking to me. And this is definitely a knife that I would carry in New York City. And I'd be comfortable with having it in my pocket. You know what I mean? Why do I have a line here? Meh. Just noticed. It's a wrinkle, huh? Let's get there. <laughs> you motherfuckers. You my... The people that rock with me are going to be like, yep, that's just typical Ray right there. <laughs> Um, my, one of the complaints I had was this is kind of like cheapening the look of it. It says artisan cutlery on the backspace right there. I do like the lanyard hole going through the back too. Um, and also when you flip the knife open, this right here, this, uh, part of the carbon fiber sticks out and that shit kind of hurt, bro. It, this is, that's not what did this. My cat did that, but that's just kind of shot right there. And also the uh, the the lock bar, you got to really press into that. And sometimes it can get kind of kind of tedious, you know, it can kind of tire your hands out if you're doing that. Because all I'm really doing with my knives is flipping them open like this. So that's my complaints about the Hyperion. What else do I got over here? Okay, this is the Artisan Cutlery Arroyo. This is a Dirk Pinkerton design right here. Look at that nice upswept blade. Check that out. I've definitely talked about this before. I'm just giving them shine again. Deep carry clip. Let me show you guys this real quick. Deep carry clip and the placement for the pocket clip is cut into the G10 and the screws are recessed. I mean, that's home runs all around, baby. You know what I'm saying? And just a cool design. 
kind of slim. It feels slim in my hands. Good ergos. I've got like uh, some black. I don't know what that's from. Good ergos for the fish paws. And just really, really nice. The blade steel is ARRPM9 again. So fucking cool, man. Really cool and not too expensive either. You guys should check this one out. I really dig it. Is there weight reduction? Yeah, weight reduction on this one too. Artisan has some hits, bro. Artisan got some fucking hits. Um, let's see. <clears throat> CJRB Rhea. I think this was given to me. <clears throat> um, if I wanted to use it for a giveaway or something. I think, I think, oh, no, wait, uh, maybe this one was, was, um, like part of the deal that I made with Eugene Kwan when I bought that crazy fixed blade from Olo Knives, maybe, but this is CJRB Rhea, you've got thumb stud on one side, um, contour G10 scales, deep carry clip, again, check that out. Cut out into the G10, the placement, and um, recessed screws. Awesome. Just awesome all around, man. Even Shabazz talked about this one saying it was dope. And I agree with that, bro. This shit is sick right here. The blade steel on this one is 12C27N, so it's going to make this ridiculously cheap. You know, just a nice little, like, uh, almost traditional looking beater knife. Yeah, I dig it. It's one of the, the hot ones. But yeah, man, you know, that is it for the knives, I think. I, I do have the Osprey here. I don't have a lot of use on this, except like we cut cardboard and stuff with it. I mean, this thing is just massive. <laughs> and, and Russell is just like, here, yo. <laughs> yo, Russell's a good dude, man. And, and I'll, I'll always uh, check out Artisan Knives and try to do what I can for him. Even though I didn't make the fucking Amazon <laughs> thing. I'm going to do that tomorrow, yo, for sure. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, yeah, this is a big one. This is in D2, I believe, Contour G10. They did not do the recess screws with the uh, the pocket clip there, but the placement is cut out into the G10, so that's really good. It's a heavy, heavy dude. Look at this. <laughs> that's, that's a chopa in it. And I think the first uh, knife that Russell ever sent to me was the Contour G10 <clears throat> uh, Archeo. Shout out to Dylan Mallory, and I, I never got to review this one. But to be fair, I have showed this mad times on my channel. You've got uh, D2 on the blade here. I just like this blade shape a lot. It reminds me kind of the Booze Blades Arrow Mini. And Dylan's my boy, so I had to shout him out here. But some pretty cool knives, you know, that you guys haven't gotten to see in a while. And I just wanted to give, you know, some love to Artisan. Man, doing a solo pod is freaking crazy. Because <clears throat> I'm definitely talking to myself. But I feel like... Oh, my cat's crying. But I feel like, you know, it's a skill to not have dead air. And um, shit, man. I like it. I like this. I think this is going to be a thing I'm going to keep doing. You guys have been seeing this. I just saw this on my table right now. The Are You Garbage playing cards. <laughs> this is a good addition to the pond. The, the pod. The pond. A good addition to the pod, yo. Let's pull out one question from here. Uh, it's the such a basic Are You Garbage question. I can't believe I just got it. Do you drink milk with dinner? And you guys know I don't do that. What I've been loving about Are You Garbage is like people will chime in in the comments and be like, I guess I'm garbage. Here's why. And it just makes me laugh so much, man. Dude, the community, the EDCC community is pretty lit, man. You know, I feel very connected to you guys. And uh, it's fucking awesome, man. Thank you guys for just like always like tuning in and stuff. I there's so many familiar faces now and the lives have just been super awesome um people submitting to edc fits 
it's fucking sick. You know, I get to do that every Tuesday. Dude, those EDC fits, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how those go. So every Tuesday morning, right? So I can't do any work on the channel on Monday because on Monday I do the lives. I get to hang out with my boys digitally on the lives. Then on Tuesday, I have to wake up super early. I got to work out, right? I got to cook my food for the day because your boy bring in lunches every day. And then like, I'll, I got to take a shower and then like around like, if I'm lucky, I'll be done with all that by 930. And then I'll get to do EDC fits and I have to create the fit that time too. And then depending on how many submissions I have, is like how long the video is going to take and I have to film all of that and try to be out by 11. I got to transfer the footage from the camera and do all that. And then I edit on the train. You know what I mean? And I try to get it up as soon as possible, man. And, and it's a lot of work, dude, to do that show. But it's fun. It's fun being able to interact with my community, man. It's, it's fucking really, really fun. I, I, you guys, man, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get sentimental one day and just start like balling the fucking, you know, on, on these solo pods. But yeah, you guys have been really stepping up, man. And uh, I really appreciate it. So step up and go to patreon.com slash everything city care <laughs> for exclusive content. Does Kelly show titties? Do I show my feet? Average Asian peen? What do you think? You don't know. It's Patreon, baby. Um, I do. <laughs> I do have some, uh, some, some, some current event stuff here that I put aside that I basically stole from other podcasts. I listened today. <laughs> So Bill and Melinda Gates get a divorce. Um, let, let's look, click on this and see where it leads us. I'm going to put this on the screen, actually. Yeah, I forgot that I could do that right now. Share the screen. Okay. Boom. Bill and Melinda Gates are divorcing after 27 years of marriage. I wonder what it, why that is. Did they? Damn, dude, there's so many fucking like ads and stuff on this. Holy crap, bro. And it's New York Times, too. The announcement raises questions about the fate of their fortune. The couple helped create the Giving Pledge, but much of his Microsoft money has not yet been donated. Hmm, interesting. Let's just skim through it real quick. I thought you guys would find this interesting. I think in the knife community, there are some conspiracy people. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, with an endowment of some $50 billion, has had immense influence in fields like global health and early childhood education, and has made great strides in reducing deaths caused by malaria and other infectious diseases. That sounds good, right? That sounds good. But Tim Dillon says that Bill Gates <laughs> and a bat created COVID. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I wonder what she's getting. Is she getting, like, mad loot? Let's keep going. I'm just going to skim through it. Um, oh, shit. Look at Bill Gates. <laughs> what the fuck? This is so strange, bro. Look at old Billy Gates. <laughs> it says they will continue to work together to shape and approve foundation strategies, advocate for the foundation's issues, and set the organization's overall direction. This is on the New York Times page, by the way, as you guys can see. Let's check out what she is getting, all right? Even so, the divorce will create new questions about the fate of the Gates' fortune, much of which has not yet been donated to the Gates Foundation. Mr. Gates, 65, who co-founded Microsoft, is one of the richest people in the world, worth an estimated $124 billion, according to Forbes. The Gateses have been married for 27 years and have three children ages 18 to 25, man. So, you know, for me, like, I think that, like, he definitely should give money to his wife, you know, take care of the kiddos, um, make sure they're okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see what she's going to get, dude. You know what I mean? I don't see anything here about that. That's what I'm interested in. What is she walking away with? Because Jeff Bezos, when he fucking divorced his wife, she walked away with half and became the richest woman in the world, yo. <laughs> And then he fucking made even more money after the divorce, yo. He made even more money. <laughs> Amazon crushing it right now. Yeah, I don't see... 
I don't see really an amount or anything or a speculated amount of what she would walk away with. I'm not going to read all this shit. This is going to get boring. Um, yeah. <laughs> that shit is hilarious, dude. Um, let's check out another one right here. This one was pretty funny. I saw this on TikTok, but then I saw it again. I saw it again on... Um, on another podcast I, li I listen to, uh, it's called Fighter and the Kid. Shout out to Fighter and the Kid, yeah. It's basically where I got, where I got all the, um, where I got all the uh, <laughs> current events here from another fucking podcast. <laughs> all right, but let's do this one. It's pretty funny. So you guys know Ben Affleck, right? Hold on, uh, get the latest news. This one's on Pace.com. TikTok user claims Ben Affleck sent her video after matching on Raya. For you guys not in the know, Raya is like a Tinder, but it's for like celebrities and rich people. Like you got to get verified as fuck. And um, let me just scroll down. So it's a single Ben Affleck is allegedly swiping right on dating apps when he's not meeting up with his ex-fiance Je Jennifer Lopez. A TikTok user named Naveen J went viral on Monday after sharing a private video. The Gone Girl actor 48 allegedly sent her to confirm his identity on Raya on the Raya dating app. So let's just check out. Look. Dude, that girl is a fucking dime piece though. Like holy shit, dude. Um, let's see. I think the video is down here. Let's see. Uh, what? Okay. Let's just find the vid real quick. It might be this one right here. Let's see if it plays. Huh. The video isn't here. That's a bummer. Um, uh, I don't see it. I think my girl is here, guys. All right, you know what? Let's just uh, not play the the uh, volume, and I don't want to get flagged for the fucking music. You know what I mean? Damn, I thought the video was on here. Let's see. Let's go back a little bit. Play that. Look, good old Ben right there. Look at him. Let's see what he says. Why did you unmatch me? It's me. Yeah, you know, it's kind of fucked up that she put him on blast like that. But can you imagine just being like some hot chick and then like matching with Ben Affleck? That's that's Batman, bro. That's Batfleck. You know what I mean? I thought that was pretty funny. You guys might not, but if you guys are like gossip whores like me, you probably will. <laughs> I know my audience. This is a dope one right here. Okay, I know some of you motherfuckers play Call of Duty. I know some of you motherfuckers play Call of Duty. Okay. I know some of you do. So, hold on a second. Let me, uh, um, no, stop. Uh, let me go like this and open link. <laughs> All right. So, T Pain, you know, the rapper T Pain, auto tune dude, you guys know him. You know what I'm saying? Um, he gets called some racial slurs while playing Call of Duty. And I, if you guys don't know, T-Pain has been crushing it on Twitch, which is a video game streaming platform. Just think the Knife community, just playing, if, but if we all played video games and watch each other play video games, okay? And T-Pain was on that and, you know, he was getting called the N-word and things like that. And he just demolishes, like, you know, all of these people and shit. So let's just check that out. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> Can't forget the shitty audio. Damn, there's mad ads, bro. There's mad ads on here. It says, video shows T-Pain annihilating Call of Duty enemies after being called racist slur. It, first of all, hey, learn to spell racial slur. I guess racist slur. Does that make sense to you guys? Damn, there's mad ads. Holy shit. T-Pain knew exactly how to handle racist gamers. And uh, let's check out the video right here. I believe this is it. You can revisit the satisfying moment below. It's playing an ad right now. So we're going to let the ad play. And then we will 
watch the video. Which one is it? Is it this one? Original Sound T Pain. What the fuck? No thanks, bitch. Is it this? What? View post view this post on Instagram. Let's check that out. Weird. <clears throat> Ah, here we go. <clears throat> no, not this one. Fuck, dude. Dude, this is not... <laughs> this is not fucking going... Oh, it loaded up, guys. It loaded up. We gonna watch it now. We gonna watch it now. Here we go. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. One of these motherfuckers on that... And I want all of them. Yeah, man. Black Lives Matter. I want every single fucking one of them. Flash myself out. I want every fucking single one of them. I want it all. I want it all. I want every part of it. I want a part of it. I want the whole thing. I want the whole thing. Keep talking that. I want you to delete the black skins from your motherfucking COD. I want the whole thing. I want it all. I want it all. Holy shit. That was fucking absolutely amazing. That was awesome. That was awesome. T Pain coming through with a W. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this one might be an interesting one to the fellas. And because I say fellas, because literally everyone that watches this, except for like Katie and Lindy Lou, are, are guys. Um, this Las Vegas news anchor was found naked in her car. All right. And I've got the story for you right here. Let me share my uh, little thing here right now. Um, if I had a producer, this would be much better. But since I do not, I have to do all this by myself. So you guys get this kind of product. <clears throat> and that shit's telling me to sign up. Look at all these foods, bro. I want to eat this shit. It says, anchor Fevin K arrested after being found passed out and naked in her car. And then this is her right there. Total dime piece. Uh, it's loading up right now, so we'll keep it going. And uh, I think that I don't want to play because I don't want to get flagged, but um, I think this is her just like saying sorry or something. A Las Vegas news anchor was arrested after being found naked and passed out in her car. Damn. Fox 5 Las Vegas anchor arrested after being found nude and asleep behind the wheel of a car by police. Was charged with reckless driving with a disregard for the safety of a person or property. Hmm. Her full name is Fevin Kifla Georges. Georges or Gord. I don't know. As I move forward, I want you to know from what I will learn from this and I will continue. I, will, I can't read the fucking subs. Uh, this is, I mean, can you imagine being the cop to find this lady naked in a car? Um, I don't know what I would do, yo. I don't know what I, I Jesus Christ. I mean, what do you... <laughs> I mean, the cop get got a treat, right? You know what I'm saying? Do you guys want to check out her Instagram? Because I have it. <laughs> let's, let's look at it, dude. I'm going to get everyone... I'm getting everyone in trouble with their wives, yo. That's what we're doing right now. All right, open link. Let's open this up, share audio. And uh, right there. Boom. So this is her Instagram right here. I guess that's her man right there. Somebody's or her friend or something. But I mean, dude, I wouldn't even know what to do if I found this. Like this lady naked in the street. I mean, I mean, what do you, what do you do? Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I wouldn't know what to do. If, if, like, I found this lady naked in the street and I'm a cop, I'd be like, oh, I, I, would I go like this? Would I, you know, that to stand firm and be like, freeze, F freeze them jugs. I mean, uh, freeze. You, Jesus, dude. Okay. That's good. That's a good current event there. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> is my, hey, Kelly, are you here? 
Uh, I, I guess she's not here. I thought she was. Maybe she would hop on. You guys like that when, when the Kelly hops on here. All right, so we're going to do... Um, Here's another uh, news thing here. So man throws change in plane engine and gets arrested. Pretty crazy. Let's share that screen right now. I got to share these Chrome tabs like individually. So, you know, so let's, uh, how the fuck do I get this fucking thing taken out? What the fuck? I don't want this. I don't want this. Get this off. How do I get rid of this? Flight canceled after man arrested for throwing six coins into plane engine for good luck. Now, there's got to be some cultural shit. Like, I already know that. China's Guangxi Beibu Gulf Airlines canceled a flight after a male passenger threw a handful of coins into the engine of a plane for good luck. Hey, don't do that, though. Hey, don't do that, though. You know? In a statement shared to popular Chinese microblogging website Weibo, the airline said that the airport staffers noticed coins on the floor under the engine in an inspection before takeoff. The man identified only by his surname Wang <laughs> in the boxes, dude. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! My girl's here. I better make room. I think my girl is gonna. Hang out for a little bit, probably. Finish off the pod strong. Huh? Can I come your pod? Yeah, why not? People like you. People like you, dude. We're looking at current events right now. I have current events. No, sweet. Yeah, I stole them all from the fighter and the kid. <laughs> but uh, let's check out some. Dude. Wow, I'm like going deaf. I think the speak the speakers, the uh, headphones are too loud in my head. So this is uh, a story. You're not gonna get a drink. Well, I mean, I just jumped on. Fine. Oh, all right. <laughs> I should drink. You say okay. What the fuck kind of weird shit is this? Because, like, look, it says we're flight canceled after a man arrested for throwing six coins into plane engine for good luck. But then the video, it says Southwest Airlines kicks black Trump supporter off plane for not wearing mask. What the hell kind of signaling is this? It's not even the right video. Authorities were able to recover all six coins, which the man had wrapped in red paper for luck, but the airline decided to cancel flight GX8814 from Weifang to Haiko in the Chinese provinces of Shang, Shandong and Hainan to ensure passenger safety. Hey, what do you think the guy's last name is? I don't know. <laughs> his name is... I don't know. His last name... Identified only by his surname, Wang. Wang. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, That's shit. That's awesome. I'm moving the camera a little. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, Just you could do bit. that. So there we could we do... Uh, cheers so to you, to... my running mate, Kelly. Cheers. That's what I call her in the uh, Patreon, by the way. So what are we looking at? Um, Just like news articles that are funny or that I found funny in other podcasts. Nice. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, let's do this because so... I think... Yeah, there you go. That's good. There we go. You look cute, dude. Thanks. So um, here's the next one right here. Uh, crazy fake punching speed on ESPN. All right. I don't remember what this is, but we're gonna check it out, right? Oh, it's on the Facebook. Fuck, we're no, not doing not it. Not a Facebook. Oh, this one is mad funny. So, LeBron James right. basically, um, you know, with the whole like the 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 sixteen year old black girl stabbing the trying to stab the other black girl and gets right, shot right? right okay so first of all LeBron James just play basketball okay <laughs> just play basketball Fair. stop trying to do all this political shit but underneath that video it just literally he 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 tweeted about that video and said you're next hashtag accountability that's what he that's what he tweeted okay, okay? um and you know. I, I think people were kind of like split in that because yeah. e even me, I was like, fuck, That's what do you, really hard what do you do? Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, Tim Dillon's take on it was like, oh, was, <laughs> it was like, it was a, it was a fat girl that looked like a real, like a, like a woman. That's why he shot her. <laughs> That's 
not what I said. I'm repeating yeah, 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 comedians yeah. here. But um, yeah, so this cop basically made this TikTok and went viral because of it. And then he got suspended. Oh, and I'm wow. going to show you the TikTok right now, okay? Show me, okay. Um, let me just pause it real quick and we'll watch it together. I'm going to share it with the audience. Share it. So here's what I've noticed. When I share my tabs yes. um, through the browser mm -hmm. like it fucking is like lit bro like it's oh, yeah. not laggy at all yeah it's crazy nice. so can you put the knife down please sir, sir no, no. hold on how do i um restart it i don't know if i can't no, hold on a second Let, let's do this again let's <laughs> do this again my bad all right so i'm gonna just uh click on that tail open link and then share the screen okay. share screen Sorry about this, guys. I do not have... All right, here we go. Cats want to play. Dispatch, I've arrived at that disturbance. Can you have LeBron call my cell phone right away, please? Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. No, can you put the knife down, please, sir? Sir, no, no, no. Sir, don't stab it. No, no, stop stabbing. Stop. Oh, hold on. Hold on, it's LeBron. LeBron, hey, you have me again. Listen, I'm out here at this disturbance call, and there's a guy trying to stab another guy with a knife. What do you think I should do? Why does that matter? Yeah, Okay, uh, well, they're both black. <laughs> One guy's trying to stab another guy with a knife. Deadly force is completely justified. Uh-huh. I see. So you don't care if a black person kills another black person, but you do care if a white cop kills a black person, <laughs> even if he's doing it to save the life of another black person? I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but then again, you are really good at basketball, so I guess I'll take your word for it. <laughs> All right. Yep. Okay. All right, thanks, LeBron. That's the best comment out of all of them. Sorry, guys. You're on your own. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking so good. So the reason why that's so interesting is he got sus he got um he got suspended. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or I don't know if he was suspended or if he was fired, right? right. But um, somebody started the GoFundMe for me, and the last time I checked it, it was four hundred thousand dollars for that guy. For that guy. So that guy is set. He doesn't even need to be a fucking cop. He's never gonna make four hundred k his whole life. Mm -hmm. He gets that GoFundMe takes some percentage, but it's not like right. having an right. OnlyFans or something. It's very little. And he just, you know, he basically is like set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That, that, cause that whole situation was a tough situation. Yeah. Um, like there was a lot of justification. This girl had been bullied for some time mm -hmm. and her dad had gotten there and he's mm -hmm. the one who's seen kicking the other guy or the girl in the video. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of like she felt safer since her family was there to back yeah. her up. But I still don't understand. Oh, I still don't understand, like, the the whole, um, I just can't get behind this one. I, yeah, I this one is too, it's, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't like know. the fact that she was, you know, shot and killed. Like, nobody oh, wants yeah, no, that. But yeah. at the same time, I'm not going to take away the validity of the other girl's life. Yeah, She was getting, she was literally cocked back and ready to stab. Mm -hmm. And regardless of the, the past history, I, I just, I don't know. It's hard for me to say, oh, well, she had been bullied for X amount. So, like, stabbing yeah. somebody was okay. Like, let's say that she she went through with it. And this mm. other girl bled out and lost her life. And this cop didn't do anything. He's still going to get fucked again. It's yeah, like he's still in happen. trouble. So, I feel like he did he's follow. He's like, you should have controlled the situation. Or some shit. It's like, it's like... You shouldn't be allowed to, like, look like you're going to kill somebody in front of a cop. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a very sticky situation. Cat was not an easy situation. My, my girl is uh, splitting the cats up right now. No, no, he was attacking our kitchen table. And, I had to uh, hide the kitchen table from the cat. And so, uh, yeah, let's see what else I got here. Interesting. Um, but that's so funny. I love when celebrities like weigh in on things and it's like... <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just don't know, man. That one is yeah. a very. I definitely wouldn't want to be that cop or that girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. no, that was a tough situation, I don't, regardless. I, I, I wish no, no one was killed in yeah. that. You know, but it's kind of like I think Tim Dillon was saying this. He's like, yeah, you gotta let the police do their job, but also they might kill you. <laughs> like, I mean, I wish it. I, in all honesty, it does signify that there is a really big need that there should be training besides just deadly force yeah um like her back was to him he could have tased her 
um, you know, just as easily as pulling out a gun, he could have pulled out, like, you know, a taser. But then at the same time... It's like it's, a really tense split-second situation, the problem man. Isn't, that's not... In, but that's just... That's not shoot it. Shoot the leg hold or some on, shit. Hold on. That, but, yeah, that's not it. The point is, is that they're not trained to quickly react with a taser. They're trained to quickly react with a gun. And mm-hmm. so it's kind of, like, outside of the norm. So maybe the norm should be fixed. Like, maybe that's what should... I don't know. Maybe. All I'm saying is... I mean, do you, that was a do you, really do you bad think situation. that when someone is th- is is about to kill another person that the the proper use of force is not deadly force i mean personally speaking if if i was trying to protect somebody else i still wouldn't want to kill them oh yeah I mean, just yeah, yeah of course. speaking but then again that goes into let's say like, like a guy was about to stab me right and a cop was there and the cop shoots him mm-hmm and saves me. Right. Do you think that was the proper use of force I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that there? that's the wrong yeah. thing to do at, by any means. I'm just praying devil's advocate. You well, know no, no, I'm not trying to I put mean, you on the spot here. I, <laughs> like, I you're like, I, I better hope he, he kills the guy. No, no, not at all. Because that would still... <laughs> what if I get killed? I don't want you to die either, you <laughs> bum ass. Oh <laughs> what a jerk. You're a jerk it's, guy. It's a, yeah, it was one of those... Just, um, it, like, there's not a win situation in that. No. There wasn't a win situation no. in that. But I don't think that she was innocent like um, Brianna Taylor, who was asleep in her bed. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah You yeah, know, yeah, that yeah. is somebody That's, who literally <clears throat> that should, should not have happened. Yeah. And yet this situation was kind of... Um, an unfortunate situation. There's not another way to say it. It's an unfortunate situation. Yeah, so. I mean, I had, like, black creators on TikTok literally saying, like, um, you know, I, I went to school in the police academy. And, like, this yeah. is one of the first things that they teach you. It's like, this was that's the proper just, response. Yeah, that's I mean, this is just, a black dude it saying seemed, it. It like, yeah, but it, it's not was a like, race thing. That is but just that's a what saving I'm lives. It, like, that is literally what the police are there for. But that's for. what I'm saying is, like, the guy, the cop in, in like, the... Right. the handbook or whatever like the, he re, he responded with the proper right. thing and um you know there're definitely a lot of people like um you know black people like angry about it but i've had a lot of black creators on tiktok saying like that's i just don't you know think I mean? that i mean it is true like all black lives matter there's nothing it it's infuriating to know that a situation like this happens but then don't say why, all though just say black lives matter I'm just no, kidding. but all all lives like all black. Regardless, don't say all lives matter though. No, but stop it. No, I'm just kidding. Baby. Stop it. But what I am saying is, is that there's just I don't know. I lost my whole train of thought because you just did that. No, thing. I'm just kidding. Like I literally lost my train of thought. It's just unfortunate every time yeah. these things happen. And it's no like a way. new thing every day, dude. Like, it's like there are pages popping up on TikTok now where it's like just dedicated to showing police brutality. Right. But the problem that like the problem that there is is that this situation in general with her being in a foster care and the stuff that was coming out was that she was just surrounded by violence. Mm-hmm. And finally, whether this is the first time that she snapped with violence or not, she did it in front of a cop and it was just sad that that happened yeah. whereas here are white people like these white men going in shooting places up and killing multiple people and then peacefully being arrested and i think the big difference is is that they didn't yeah. do it in front of the cop they mm-hmm. stop in front of the cop and they're like all right cool take me in whereas this girl felt like she had support at that moment yeah 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 i bet you and felt safe that the cops were there yeah i bet but yeah, you know but it's it was wild that it was, was a, a wild situation i feel bad because i'm sure that she well not i'm sure she deserved better than that she yeah, should have been yeah, bullied yeah. into that situation in the first place but i don't blame the cops for trying to protect yeah. and serve it's, you know it's a tough thing man it's definitely a tough one um but yeah, that's that. That was what the resp- LeBron was like. You're next. A hashtag accountability. And I'm like, no, hey, the guy, hey, LeBron, yeah. you got more things to worry about with the fucking Nets, okay? <laughs> like, first off, we still just got take it easy. The, we still need re- people held accountable for what happened mm-hmm. to Breonna Taylor. That's that's next. Um, that's been just swept under the rug for way too long. So to me, that needs yeah. to be a prime focus of somebody who's really done wrong. You know what's so. crazy? I, I, I didn't have it on the current events, but I saw a TikTok video of these two Asian women in mm-hmm. a liquor store getting beat with a brick, just like recently too, in Baltimore, I think. Oh my God. They caught the guy. The, the women survived. They were like fighting him off. There's videos of it. Oh my God. Um, Maybe we can find that shit. Is this the, like a, was he like a middle-aged Asian kind of skinny women. dude? No, black dude uh, yeah, attacked. I didn't say that, but yeah. 
with brick. Because I just saw the brick. man apprehended after attacking Asia. Oh, right here. I found it. NBC News, baby. Hope I don't get fucking flagged. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Can I just get it on YouTube or something? Oh, right here. All right. Let's do that. So, <laughs> I love this, like, little... Yeah, I like these current event things, man. They're fucking those lit, dude. Those greeny, splitty thingies. I, I, it's a two Asian women, and I literally, for a second, got nervous and thought it was a porn tab. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, shit, I better fucking chill out. Um, so, look, they get attacked with a cinder block. This is on uh, ABC News. That's ABC? Is that ABC? Or yeah, NBC? I don't know. Shit, I don't fucking know. Oh, it's NBC <laughs> News. Yeah, it's NBC. All right, check it out right here. Pretty wild, yo. I'm like, I don't know. I just know the tune. Look at this shit. So this dude comes in. Look at that. It's fucking crazy. This dude doesn't do anything. He just leaves. Yeah, he's like, I'm not in that. And then, look, he like takes a brick. It's pretty tough to watch. I'm not going to lie because it looks like... See, he's like hitting her with a brick, right? What in the hell? Yeah, it's fucking wild. So the I think they're, oh! they're sisters, I think. They like fight him off. See, he's like, she's like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah, I, I, I'm fucking like, yo, this is crazy right here. Like, I felt really bad. They did catch the guy, so fuck this guy, seriously. But this type of shit, and you know what's crazy, though? Well, wild, like, just what's wild to me is You know what's crazy? Is somebody worked there. What's crazy to me Nobody is them. what's crazy is how little that story is. Oh, I know. Because like, because a lot of these things have been going around. Um, I'm seeing a lot of that too, an uptick yeah. in that. But yeah. also at the same time, it's like I don't know. You know when the lady? Uh, fuck, I forgot where I heard this. You know the you know you know when that lady got um like stomped out in front of a building and they yeah. closed the door in New York. Yeah. So that day, that same day, um. There were nine other stories of elderly women being attacked. Wow. Only two of them were Asian, and those were the stories that they went with. Yeah. So the news is definitely cherry-picking yeah. the things that are going to get clicks, they're yep. going to get reshares and views and things like that. So I don't know if well, there is right an now, uptick yeah, of it yeah. or if they are just promoting only the Asian right. hate stuff, the bl- anti-cop you know, the stuff. The cop stuff. And the, I, I don't really know do if that's believe, the case. I you know? really feel firmly believe that also not that unbelievable though no right no I, I firmly believe that there is stuff that's going on but i i just think that our news outlets and um all other forms which we all know what they are are just really trying to get a rise out of everybody and keep everybody fighting and i think that keeping people fighting makes it so that nothing has to really be fixed mm-hmm um because nobody will agree on anything ever like you know it just doesn't it's the the easiest way to not fix broken things um so ultimately yeah i wouldn't be surprised i really honestly believe and that used to be something that we would study in like sociology classes basic sociology sociology 101 is how the news can keep people focused in a specific area thinking that it's bigger than what it is. That's why I've always, like, you've heard me say it before. I think that media should only be allowed to give, like, straight facts. Like, this is the fact. This is what happened. Like the kids say, facts. Just fact. Like, And I think that fact-checking should still be a thing. I don't know. I don't Mm -hmm. think that there should be any form of opinion Mm -hmm. in the news. I think it should be very blunt. Yeah, it's too divided Because I just want to be able to make my own opinion irrelevant. Like, I don't want to know what so-and-so thought and Mm -hmm. somebody's uh, it was the scariest moment of my no i just need to like what happened i can imagine it is scary or it is great or it is i don't know i just i've gotten very tired of the divide that happens same same so yeah there have been a lot of like movements here that you have not taken part in they're mostly on Sundays, gatherings in Washington Square Park to, oh, like fight, Asian stuff? to fight violence upon Asian Americans. Um, we should start marching. I. <sighs> you want to march? My family has survived in America by... We lived a, 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 by a code of just stay out of everyone's way and mind your own business. Yep. And like, we have excelled in this country by doing that. It's so funny. But you know, that's the thing. It's like a lot of uh, these um, 
new generation Asian Americans are like right. saying like, you know, we, we are done with doing that. Right. Because let's say like, you know, an older Asian person gets attacked on the street. Right. They're probably not even going to report that shit. If they survive and nothing happened to that's, them, yeah, yeah, that's how that's how hardcore yeah, Asians are. Yeah. Like we don't want to cause a stink. We don't want to fucking do anything. If we're if we're allowed to like live and go to work the next day, that's all we want to do. Yeah. That's why Asians yeah. are fucking crushing it in America. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they both in America, but yes. I mean, in, in America in general, though, they're fucking crushing it. Mm-hmm. You know, we're fucking getting bigger in media. Yep. You know, we have our own fucking Asian superhero. Sh- shout out to Shang Chi, fucking in the MCU. Um, there you go, there you go. Asian men are, like, starting to, like, pop, quote-unquote, with, like, women of other races, including <laughs> Caucasians. <laughs> you know, like, like dudes like the like Glenn from The Walking Dead, Stephen Yoon, is, like, a fucking, like, a sex icon almost yes, now. Like, he he's is. hot and stuff. And it's just, you know, the things are changing for Asians, man. And that's because, yep. like, we keep our head down yep. and we just work hard. That's what we do. But yeah. now, with all this stuff happening... And Not whether happening. it's happening and whether it's being amplified or yeah. not, yeah, um, uh, you know, Asians are just like, nah, we got to speak out more and stuff like that. I, you know, what's I crazy is yeah. I am waiting for one of these dudes to mess with the wrong grandma. And it's like some triad members fucking grandma and they just hunt him down and he gets like murdered brutally because yeah. that can totally fucking yeah. happen like if Especially you guys in new york yeah if you guys think that there aren't asian fucking mobsters in america you are fucking dead wrong bro. Yeah. <laughs> like you are right. fucking insane you probably have never seen it because these motherfuckers work in the shadows but i have lived that shit and yeah. they are fucking crazy they are there so you know but no man same. uh Thank you guys for tuning into the Patreon. This was sort of an experiment to see this if I can a still. I'm shit. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast. This is episode uh, 102. Kelly dropping in at the end. Yep. I wanted to see if I can do this again. How are you? And um, uh, it's weird because when I listen to it on my new headphones, I can hear like how out of breath I can get, and it was like kind of nerve wracking. Aww. But talking to yourself continuously for an hour is you could definitely get, a sh- you know, yeah. you could run out of breath for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely yeah. a skill. I still have it. I think um, the <laughs> current events were really good. I might start doing that more on the Patreon as well as like, you know, these. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to be pressured to have a guest on because a lot of guests fell, fell through. Right. Scheduling issues. I don't right. know if motherfuckers are just shy. Like whatever it is. They fell through and um, I don't want to be pressured into trying to have a guest on. Right. And if I can carry a show. Yeah. Like I can do this every week. What I did was I just talked about some knives I didn't get to review. I was able to give my thoughts and opinions on them here. Okay. And, you know, I have plenty of knives to do that with. Yes, so you do. it was fun. Good. It was fun. And thank you for like coming in at the last 20 <laughs> minutes of the show. I don't show PDA that much, but this is Yay. the best guest I've ever had. Aww. My co host. The Kelly. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in, man. Absolutely. Tune in again next week. I don't know if I'm going to have a guest. I'm trying to get BRS uh, Blade Runner Systems on here to talk about BRS Evolve and Revo Knives. That'll be an exciting one because they do support the channel. So, But yeah, this is your boy in the NYC and your girl, Kelly. Bye. This is the EDCC saying peace and good night. Good night. <laughs> oh. It's a freeze frame. This is the thumbnail. <laughs> Yo, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon so we can squat up in the comments.